Hello, this is the Cleveland Pools audio described tour for the ladies pool. This room is the ladies pool and you are standing in what was the only pool for women until the 1900s. The door you entered did not originally exist. Instead, women came in from the back of the building so they would not see the naked male swimmers in the main pool. Although now enclosed, this was originally open air, but during renovation a clear ceiling was put in place. There are currently two steps up to the pool edge and two changing rooms to the left. At the time the pool was deeper, but still not big enough to actually swim in. Around the edge of the room there are four boards describing key moments in the pool's history. They are large and attached to silver metal poles that reach up to the ceiling so they don't damage the listed building's stone walls. The tour starts with a row of three boards opposite the entrance. We start on the left. Each of these boards is a dark teal shade with a Cleveland Pools logo in white at the top centre and writing in white. Board 1, 1801-1817 Dominating the centre of this board is an uneven circle containing a section of watercolour painting. The scene is of the pools viewed from the riverside and looking towards the central building with the changing rooms on either side. The building is reflected in the pool in the foreground. Behind are tall trees and shrubs and the rooftop of a house is just visible high up on the far left. The words Watercolour of the Cleveland Pools by local artist Jane Riley are written in the bottom right hand corner of the illustration. Above the painting on the right there is a bold paintbrush stroke motif in a soft salmon colour and below are the words Avert your eyes ladies. Strolling beside the River Avon you might well have witnessed men swimming naked until a law was passed in 1801 banning nude bathing. There was, however, still demand for a safe private spot to swim, and so a subscription appeal, the Georgian version of crowdfunding, was launched. 85 men subscribed, including doctors, musicians and the mayor. The money was raised for an exclusive gentleman's pool which opened in 1817. A separate ladies' pool was built where you are standing now. It's not likely that men and women swam in the same pool until the 1900s. Born to Build Known at first as the Pleasure Baths, the pools were built by local entrepreneur William Bourne with the help of architect John Pinch the Elder. Later they were renamed after the Duke of Cleveland because they were built on his land. The pool was filled with water filtered from the river. Board 2, the 1860s In the centre there is a graphic illustration of the pool. An outline of crowds holding their arms up and waving their hats surround the water. To the left is a diving board with a person walking towards the end. They are wearing a striped one-piece costume and a top hat. Captain Evans is written next to the person. Captain Evans dives in. In the 1860s, the extraordinary Captain William Evans became manager. He lived here with his pet baboon and was known as something of a stuntman. Letters in the local press mention a dive of 30 metres into just 2 metres of water. His crash helmet was a top hat and he would hand out ginger beer and gingerbread to the huge crowds who came to watch him. Underneath the illustration to the left is a QR code with the words Scan the code for 1867 The Eccentric Captain Evans. This leads to a 3 minute YouTube video. On the right of the board is a small glass fronted box containing a large silver medal. It is around 10 centimetres in diameter and has fine engraved words and decorative lines. At the top is a silver loop through which a royal blue ribbon is threaded. To the right, QR code. Scan the code for stories from the pools. Captain Evans, stories from the pools, the medal. This leads to a short YouTube video. On the left is a large graphic illustration of the medal with the words Swimming Prize, Cleveland Baths, Bath, written around the edge, presented by Mr M. Evans to Broderick S. Warner, September 2, 1863. Underneath the box are the words A Lifesaver. 
Like today, the Victorians considered swimming a good way to keep fit and also thought learning to life save was important. A new pool, especially for younger children, was built in the 1860s where the kiosk is now. Swimming competitions were often held for children and winners were awarded with medals like the one above. Board 3, 1900 to 1970s. On the right, a circular shape contains a black and white photo with the caption, 1973, silliness at the pools. A young boy around 10 years old in swimming trunks sits on top of a water fountain, his arms out wide as he grins at the camera. Water from the fountain spurts from between his legs as other children and teenagers look on. Behind the boy, a sign says, please keep off the fountain. Below the photo is a bold paintbrush stroke motif in a soft salmon colour and underneath are the words, a place for everyone. Over the years, Cleveland pools got busier, particularly in the warmer months. They were extended in 1909 when Samuel Inkerman Bailey, a Royal Navy diver, was in charge. Clubs and competitions. Swimming clubs became popular and the Bath Dolphin Swimming Club set up an outdoor space at Cleveland Pools in the early 1900s. Up until the 1900s, swimming and diving camps had mainly been for men only. But in the 1920s, Irene Snellgrove became famous for her swallow dives. Wearing woolies. Did you know that swimwear used to be knitted? Over the years, swimsuit designs changed as swimmers wanted to look good and swim faster. On the right-hand side at the bottom is a box with a clear front. It contains a pair of dark-coloured woolen swimming trunks. They have a draw-cord waist and a label sewn into the back of the waistband with the words name and date. Above this box are the words, Were you here before? From the 1950s, Cleveland pools became a favourite spot for people to socialise as well as swim. Do you have memories of visiting? Perhaps it's where you learnt to swim or enjoyed a family day out. The final board, telling the history of the pools, is on the wall directly opposite, next to the entrance. Board 4, from 1984. On the right, a large circle contains an aerial photo of the pool during renovation works. There is a small crane and the pool area is covered in a huge white cover. The river is at the bottom of the image and a bright yellow boat is moored by the pool. The rise and fall of the pools. Be honest, which would you choose? A warm indoor pool or a cold outdoor one? In the 1970s, more and more people chose the new leisure centre. The chilly Cleveland pools closed to swimmers in 1984, reopening as a tea room, trout farm and koi carp pond. By 2003, the pools were in a very poor state, so the council put them up for sale. Local campaigners Anne Dunlop, Roger Houghton and Janice Driesback came to the rescue forming the Cleveland Pools Trust to raise funds and save Britain's oldest Lido. Dedicated volunteers looked after the site, ran tours and ensured this magical spot wasn't forgotten. Their efforts were rewarded in 2018 with financial support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund totalling £6.47 million. The Cleveland Pools Trust raised a further £2.8 million and the new pools were born. Restoration work started in 2020, and in 2022, people could enjoy outdoor swimming once more. On the right is a poster with the words, Bath, Trout Farm and Tea Gardens, Ornamental Fish, Bird Aviaries, Refreshments. Admission free, underlined. Board the Pulteney Princess. Two photos show the pool as it was then, with a small fountain and lily pads. The caption reads, 1980s advertising for a very different experience at the pool. At the bottom of the poster, alongside a graphic of a hand with crossed fingers and a smiley face, made possible with Heritage Fund. And that's the end of this audio described tour of the ladies pool. Thanks for listening.